What is up, watch fam, and welcome to In The Metal. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and today we're gonna to be jumping into the six new additions to the Theo and Harris watch shop. So to kick off today's episode and this week's new addition to the watch shop, we've got an amazing vintage Omega, uh, not only with this crazy beautiful immaculate, geez, slate dial, but with its original Omega bracelet, which really does remind me a hell of a lot of a Rolex oyster bracelet. It's complete with its original clasp, hands, and loom dots all around. It has all of the sports durability of a vintage Rolex sports model, but in execution, it has a bit of a slimmer profile. I'm very, very aggressive on this watch, and you know what? At the end of the day, it just looks beautiful on the wrist and in the metal. On to the next watch, we actually didn't go vintage, we went with something modern. One of my favorite modern watches in recent years, the Junghans Chronoscope Telemeter. This is an absolutely beautifully executed modern reinterpretation of a vintage design. While it takes so many design cues from a vintage Universal Genève, for example, its case pushers and crystal are so true to the Junghans brand. So because these Germans, yes, did pull from the past, pull from what might not be proprietarily theirs, they appropriated it to their own design and to their own brand. Uh, and I've got to respect that. And you know what? After all the meta analyzation, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful watch that wears incredibly well on the wrist at 40 millimeters. When I first saw this watch come out, I knew I was in love. I just never thought I'd own one. But I was lucky enough to have the opportunity and I couldn't be happier that I did. Next, one of my absolute favorites, a vintage Rolex Datejust reference 1603. It features a beautiful and simplistic silver sunburst dial, which is absolutely untouched. Beyond that, its custard loom plots behind each hour indice are entirely intact and custard. I mean, it may be a little bit gluttonous, but damn, does that take this watch to the next level. And if all of that wasn't enough, this is actually a Sigma dial. If you look really closely at the bottom, you see OT Swiss TO, but actually those aren't O's. They are Greek Sigma letters. Now the meaning of the Sigma dial is kind of debated. Some say Rolex used it as a little marketing ploy. Others say it was always and only used to signify the usage of gold on a dial. Now while that's still in debate, what isn't are their, their rarity and desirability in the market. If you know vintage Rolex, you know just how important rarity small details are. So moving on, let's go over to a Rolex sister company Tudor, and this is actually one of my favorite vintage Tudor models out there. It's a date day. It features an absolutely immaculate silver sunburst style, perfect luminova throughout, a very sharp steel case, and to me, this smooth bezel is so special. And that's probably because in the Rolex world, the smooth bezels are so desired and so sought after that when we do find them in Tudor, we know just how lucky we are and we don't take it for granted. But ultimately, what this watch represents is value in the vintage Rolex family market. It's a day date in steel in absolutely wonderful condition. It wears on the wrist like a dream and I just don't think we can ask for much more than that. Next, we've got another Rolex, an oddball reference, a 1501. It's called a date model. It features two absolutely remarkable variables here. One, a funky take on an engine turned bezel and two, this extremely rare slate sunburst dial. As someone who literally hunts vintage Rolex for a living, I realize how special this watch is and what an opportunity it presents. And finally, we have a beautiful vintage Angelus with a speckled patina throughout. It's powered by the Caliber 251 and secured with its original screw down case back. But really what is so incredibly special about this watch, at least in my opinion, are those three blue leaf hands. The way they play with and complement this kind of speckled custardy dial absolutely blows me away. And I suppose the fact that it was produced by one of the most well-respected vintage Swiss manufacturers of all time doesn't hurt. 
So just to recap, we've got an amazing vintage Omega Automatic Geneve with its original oyster-like bracelet, a Jung Hans Chronoscope telemeter, one of my absolute favorite modern watches on the market, a vintage Rolex 1603 with matching custard patina throughout its original Jubilee bracelet, and a Sigma dial, a Tudor date day dating to 1983 with a perfect sunburst silver dial, and a super smooth, smooth bezel, a Rolex 1501 dating to 1974 with a painfully rare gray sunburst dial, and finally one of the most beautiful vintage Angelus models I have ever been lucky enough to own. So that's it guys, thank you so much for watching this week's episode of In The Metal. Now run, don't walk, to the Theo and Harris watch shop.